Welcome back to another episode of Spilling the Tea with Dr. T. Gabriel D. That's me. And Lava Lee. The there she trio is. is back for another episode. Today we're going to be talking about something sexually health, sexual health related. And wow, that's new. Yeah, we never talk about sexual health. It's <laughs> very unusual for us here. It actually came from a question I have gotten from multiple patients. And I think something that I saw in the comments below um, on one of our videos. But today we're going to be talking about semen. Ah, we never talk about semen specifically. So that's new. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about the expectations of what semen should look like, yeah. normal variations, abnormalities, or things that should make you concerned, reasons maybe you should see a doctor if some of these things are going on, and to give you some reassurance because semen can have quite a different array of presentations <laughs> for a lot of us out there. So I thought it would be a good topic to discuss today. Cool. Stick around. At the end of this video, you know everything about semen. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> so what does semen typically look like? So semen has a typical color, mm. a typical consistency, a typical volume, even a typical smell, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so we're going to go through all those different um, sort of characteristics so people out there can determine if theirs is normal or not. What color should semen be? So generally, semen is going to be a white to grayish color, and that's because semen consists mostly of, of course, sperm and then other fluids that are created by the prostate and something called the seminal vesicles, which we've talked about in previous videos. And the color can vary from day to day, I'm assuming? Yeah, not, not so much day to day as maybe week by week or person uh -huh. to person. But if you're seeing sort of a hue between clear, white, and gray, you're probably all good. Are there other variations? So you may see some yellow occasionally. Uh -huh. This is considered normal as well. But if you see a predominantly yellow or like greenish hue or some sort of abnormal color, maybe bring it to someone's attention, particularly your medical provider. Right. But there may be a little bit of a yellowish hue or clear, like I mentioned. So in general, white, gray, and clear are usually the most common with maybe a yellowish hue for some patients out there. What is the difference between white and clear? That's a good question because it kind of can be a little tricky, but white would be like milk. Clear would be like water. So usually it's a combination of the two, but both would be considered normal. Understood. Yeah, and the reason for these variations, even from person day to day or week to week, can be due to diet, environmental mm -hmm. triggers, and usually it's something that you've eaten or drank that can contribute to a change in the color of your semen. Maybe not enough water? Yeah, we're definitely going to talk more about how important hydration is. So if you are dehydrated, probably less clear. If you are extremely hydrated, probably more clear. And of course, depending on your diet and environmental factors, that can weigh heavily into how that color changes from day to day, week to week, month to month. There are certain foods, specifically like asparagus, we know changes um. the odor of our urine and maybe even the color. And that can also be contributing to changes in semen. I was asking this because in the previous videos, we learned that if you want to increase your semen volume, you drink more water. Yep. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, semen is mostly made of water. So the more hydrated you are, the more likely it's going to be a higher volume. And what is the normal consistency of semen? So immediately after ejaculation, typically semen is going to have a very gel-like consistency and be maybe a little sticky. And then about 20 to 30 minutes later, it actually will start to liquefy. So... Oh. For those of us who have maybe let it sit too long, you may notice it gets a little runny. And this is actually a biological phenomenon, hoping that the liquefied semen will then be able to travel easier through the reproductive tract to help fertilization for pregnancy, as that's really the goal of, I guess, semen production. I don't know. Not for me, but maybe for people out there, you know, that's their goal. And so the body is trying to make that semen as flexible as possible to get where it needs to go. Oh, science. Oh, science. And yes, yeah, so sometimes it can appear more gel-like, sometimes more watery. All these sort of variations are considered normal. And it's going to depend too, like we mentioned on hydration. If you're very hydrated, it's going to be probably more watery. If you haven't ejaculated in quite some time, that can also change the variance between gel and water-like. And then also, of course, any medical conditions can also contribute. But in general, if you're seeing something a little jelly to watery, all good. Healthy semen. Healthy semen. So how much semen is typically produced per ejaculation? The average volume of semen produced per ejaculation is between about 1.5 and 5 milliliters. Pretty concrete, but quite a big range. And of course, things that are going to factor into that typically are age, right. hormonal factors, if you're on medication, how hydrated you are. So there are things that are going to be at play, which will kind of push you either towards the lower side or the higher side. Is it normal that some people produce less semen than others? Yeah, absolutely. Just because you maybe produce less or maybe you produce more than other people, that doesn't mean that necessarily you're a 
decreased risk for fertility or having any issues, but things that could be contributing. Again, if you're on any medication, that can make an impact. If you have health conditions, if you have low testosterone or hormone deficiencies, that can also be at play. So it really varies again, person by person, but in general, between that 1.5 and 5 milliliters is what you're looking at on average. Now, there are some things you can also do in regards to lifestyle changes if you're trying to bump up that volume, right. maybe for a particular event or a type of encounter. Special rendezvous. A special rendezvous. So <laughs> on average, if you wait about two to three days before ejaculating, right. your volume is going to be at its peak. So that's all you need to wait in order to really hit that climax. Anything beyond seven days actually starts to cause the semen to degrade wow. and get sort of regenerated. And thus, after about three days, you're going back into the lower end of the volume. And so there's this idea that no fap or if you avoid jacking off or ejaculating or masturbating or having sex, that it's going to boost your testosterone or it's going to boost your volume. And that's not true. There actually is a climax point for volume, and that's about three days. That's great to know because I've seen on internet people saying that it's recommended that you don't ejaculate often or not every day because you can increase your testosterone and all of those things, but false. Yeah, I've never seen a medical provider or physician actually um, recommend that. So if you have seen that, let me know in the comments below who maybe has said that that is a medical provider. I have seen many people on YouTube or other channels that have recommended just from their own preferences. Um, but again, there's no medical uh, recommendation that you should avoid ejaculation for that long. There's, there's no benefit. So let's talk about smell. What does semen smell like? Semen actually has a bit of a chlorinated smell. So chlorine, of course, I think of the pool first. <laughs> That's a quite dramatic uh, chlorinated smell. This should be a lot more mild. And the reason is, is because there's a lot of alkaline substances and enzymes enzymes in semen. So that's the reason it gives off a little bit of that odor. Certain things that may contribute to this, of course, are always going to be diet. So like I mentioned, having asparagus or these potent foods that we know impact our um, odor of our urine is going to make a big difference also in our semen. And then things like alcohol and smoking tobacco can actually have a negative impact as well. In general, though, it probably doesn't produce much of an odor. But right. if you smell a little bit something like chlorine or a little chlorinated smell, that's typically considered normal. Incredible. Things we learn here in this channel. <laughs> You know, when I went to medical school, the first thing I thought is I can't wait to teach people what semen smells like. Look at you now, teaching people what <laughs> semen smell and taste and... We haven't gotten to taste yet. Oh, we're coming. It's coming. <laughs> I don't know if it's on this list. <laughs> what are some abnormalities in semen appearance? Yeah, so let's start with color. So first thing you want to note, if you see any red or pinkish hue to your semen, this is of concern. This is mm. called hematospermia. So that means that there's likely something blood related in the sperm. This can be due to things like infection, mm. trauma, inflammation, irritation. So anytime you see that, you want to see a doctor pretty quickly. It's not a good sign. Other things you can see is even actually a brown color. So the brown actually is very similar in the fact that it's likely related to blood, but it may be old blood. So as blood changes over time, it becomes more of that rust-like color. Again, another reason you want to see a doctor pretty quickly to say, hey, there's something you know going on here to make sure nothing is acutely injuring you or chronically you know, causing problems in that area. So the color of the semen is basically a signal that something's going on in the body. That's right. And some other colors to be on the lookout for would be green or yellow, like a marked yellow color in comparison to what a yellow hue or light yellow could be normal a dark yellow or maybe an orangey color green these are signs of infection so you want to see a doctor again because this could be some sort of sexually transmitted infection or disease it could also be prostatitis or inflammation of the mm -hmm. prostate so quickly you want to try to get to maybe an urgent care an er your local provider so they can take a look see what's going on and make sure we can get you feeling better are there abnormalities in consistency yeah, so if you notice that your semen is more clumpy or maybe mm. more thick, this could be a sign that you're dehydrated. So certainly right. check your hydration status. How often have you been drinking water? Maybe consider that as an initial step to see if it improves. And if there's no improvement, it could also be a sign of infection or inflammation. So another reason to maybe see your medical provider and say, hey, what do you think of this? So they can make sure that nothing more serious is going on. Let's talk about volume abnormalities in semen. What should we look out for? So a consistently low semen volume may be due to something like an issue with the prostate, the seminal vesicles. Mm. It could even be a hormonal deficiency like low testosterone. But in general, most people with a low semen volume are completely normal. Now, if this is bothersome or if you have questions about it, always talk to your own provider so they can make sure all things are good. But in general, it's likely to be normal. Is there a problem with too much volume? So in general, no. There's usually not an issue related to having too much semen volume. However, it could be an indicator that something's going on with the prostate as well, like prostatitis, inflammation of the prostate state, 
Prostatic hyperplasia, also known as BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia, can also maybe result in an increase in semen. So as long as you're not having any other symptoms that may be related to inflammation of your prostate, like frequent urination, this is likely to be normal. But again, you can always talk to your medical provider. They can analyze your sperm and review with you your concerns and make sure all's good. Can testosterone replacement therapy increase the volume of the semen? That's a great question. Yeah, so if you have low testosterone and or any type of hormonal deficiency, Improving that is going to result in an increase in your semen volume. So certainly something to consider if that is an issue for you. So yes, testosterone replacement therapy can increase your semen volume for patients that have low T. Are there unusual odors to semen? Absolutely. So if you notice a foul smell to your semen, this is likely indicating that there's some sort of bacterial infection there. Could be a sexually transmitted infection. So certainly you want to talk to your doctor pretty quickly. If you notice a fishy smell, this is also another infection that can be happening. It's not considered a sexually transmitted disease. It's actually something called bacterial vaginosis. And it can still be spread to men, even though it is having Crazy. that sort of terminology. And it's basically... A uh, type of bacteria that overgrows in the vagina, which can then spread to other people and can cause a fishy smell. Easily fixed with antibiotics, but certainly something to talk to your doctor about so they can get you feeling better. And so what are the main causes for semen abnormalities? So one of the main causes for semen abnormalities is going to be infection. So certainly it's going to impact the color, making it yellow, green, red, or pink. Then we think of the consistency, it can maybe change as well. We think of the odor, which of course right. can be strong or pugnant. And then if you have any of those symptoms, you want to talk to a doctor relatively quickly. Again, this is a reason you want to be treated and get those symptoms improved so you feel better and get rid of the infection. Another common would be prostate issues. As we mentioned, prostate is super important with semen production. The prostate and seminal vesicles specifically are producing that fluid. So if there's any sort of irritation, inflammation in that area or disease present, it's going to impact semen production as well. We also can consider lifestyle factors. So hydration, of course, right. is going to make a big impact in how much volume is present, the color and consistency as well. Smoking and alcohol can both wow. cause negative impacts on semen production and appearance. Following a well-rounded diet as well as exercising regularly can also have a positive impact. And then finally, medical conditions and medications. Both of these things can impact our semen. Specifically, we think of things like hormonal deficiencies. If you have low testosterone, that can be a common cause for changes in the semen appearance, the volume. Wow. And so certainly something to consider talking to your doctor about. And if you're on a new medication and seeing those changes, the medication is likely the culprit for any of the results that you're seeing in your semen. There's a lot of factors at play. Yeah, pretty much everything uh, that uh, you can think of <laughs> is going to impact your semen in some capacity. Right. Uh, but in general, most people don't see very many changes, even when they have mm -hmm. some of these concerns. Right. So just because your semen is normal does not mean you don't have medical conditions. Uh -huh. You are following a good lifestyle. You're hydrated enough. You don't have infection or any sort of issues with your prostate. I'm not saying that. It's not a clean bill of health. But it can be indicative of changes if you're seeing changes. Absolutely. And when should someone see a medical provider? If you're noticing changes on multiple occasions throughout ejaculation, maybe you're not having any other symptoms, it's probably still a good idea to consider talking to a medical provider. But if you notice any of those warning signs like redness, pink, brown, those types of coloration changes, or if you're having pain, discomfort, fever, these are all signs that you should likely see a doctor relatively quickly. So again, they can get you feeling better and address the issue promptly. Last but not least, and I'm just asking for a friend, how can we keep our semen healthy? Great question. So number one, lifestyle factors. So staying well hydrated, exercising regularly, following a balanced diet, rich in nutrients, of course, is going to help semen production. And then you want to avoid any triggers or causes. So right, infection, we think safe sex, using condoms regularly, right. getting tested and health screens regularly to ensure you don't have any sexually transmitted infections. And you're on top of those things, you know, maintaining your health, avoiding any chronic medical conditions or doing your best to improve them. If you're diagnosed with them, all of these things are going to make it to where you your semen should be as healthy as possible. But if you have other questions about your semen or other questions about sexual health in general, let you us know where know. to leave them. Leave them in the comments below. We would love to discuss those issues with you. And what about you? What has been your experience with semen? Have you ever had issues come up? Maybe you don't want to talk about them. Totally fine. But if you're like me and like to share too much information, <laughs> we'd love to hear from uh, you below and what your experience was. Please let us know in the comments. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel, like, share, post. You already know what to do. Keep sharing your stories and keep following along with us. It's a pleasure to be here with you, always answering my questions. I try. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to seeing you at our next video next week. Until then, see you. See you later. Bye. Let's talk about volume.
abnormalities, 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 abnormalities. At the end of this video, I'm going to be abnormalities, abnormalities, abnormalities.